Yes. All right. Welcome everyone uh, to the resumption of our December special meeting of the Washington State Gambling Commission. Uh, just for review, I'll let everyone know that we convened at uh, 9 a.m. this morning uh, and went immediately into executive session to discuss potential agency litigation with legal counsel, including tribal negotiations. Uh, and we're, we were in executive session until uh, noon and took a little half hour break and have now resumed. So again, welcome everyone. Uh, I would like to remind everyone that we are being recorded and that I would ask everyone to utilize their best virtual format uh, etiquette uh, for this meeting. And thus, if you're not a commissioner uh, or ex officio, I'd ask that you maintain yourself muted. And if uh, you need to uh, get our attention for a public comment period or something of the, the sort to uh, use the functionality of the of the platform. Uh, so with that, I would ask that the interim director please call the roll to ensure a quorum. Okay, uh, Vice Chair Patterson. Here. Commissioner Levy. Here. Commissioner Reeves. It's Excused. Thank you. Commissioner Lawson. Here. Chair Sizemore. Here. Senator Conway. Uh, I believe he was had other meetings. Okay. Senator Holy. Had a prior engagement. Representative Cloba. I think she had another meeting. Would be she'll be rejoining us at some point. Representative Vic. All right, so we have a quorum of four commissioners, so we can continue. Uh, with that, as a law enforcement agency, uh, I think it's um, incumbent upon us to recognize the risks associated with those uh, roles and responsibilities of our special agents. So uh, for that reason, I'd ask for a moment of silence uh, for all those um, law enforcement officers that we've lost uh, in the line of duty anywhere around the country in this since the last time that we've met. So a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Uh, so with that, we have a quite a full agenda today and first order of business. Uh, I would like to uh, have consideration of the consent agenda. Uh, consent agenda includes November 10th special meeting minute meeting minutes, November 16th commission meeting minutes, new licenses and class three employees license and sports wagering vendor reports. Is there any additions or deletions from the consent agenda? Not seeing any, is there a motion? I move to approve the consent agenda as presented by staff. And a second. I can second it, Patterson. Okay, it has been moved by Commissioner Levy, seconded by Vice Chair Patterson to adopt the consent agenda. Uh, we'll try a voice vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries four to zero. Uh, next item is an interim director's report, and I know that we have a written report and a little uh, addition to that. Yes, thank you, Chair. So, um, interim director's report is verbal. So, um, this just wanted to bring to your attention the sports books that have opened within the last week. Uh, Still, Aguamish opened their retail counter, and Kalispell opened their retail counter, and um, kiosks are on site and should be functioning soon. And then just an update on Soquami, they have um, started their on-premise mobile applications now. So 
And then the written report that is in your packet, that is actually from Lisa Benavides, the HR director. It addresses the commissioner's questions on staff pay and recruitment following um, the report that I gave on staffing last month. That is all. All right, Let's thank you for that. Any questions for the interim director at this point? Okay, seeing none. Uh, we will now move uh, to the next item on our agenda, which is a presentation uh, of financial and licensee update. And we are fortunate to have uh, our new uh, chief financial officer, uh, Chrisinda Hansen. So, Chrisinda, are you, I hope with all that, that you're with us? I am, thank you. Awesome. So, uh, good afternoon. Thank you for introducing me again. My name is Kristen Hansen, Chief Financial Officer. I'll be going through a presentation. The slides in this presentation are our status as of October 31st. So next slide, please. Thank you. Well, our fiscal year 22 revenue summary, again, that's July to October, was projected to be at $7 million. The actual numbers as of the close of October was 6400000 dollars It was a late payment and was... Chrisinda? Yes, sir. You're fading in and out oh, okay. uh, your audio. So oh, I'm sorry. that's all right. If you can give it another whirl. Yeah, let me see if my phone. Um, there is nothing to adjust, so I will just speak louder. All right. Okay, so our fiscal year summary, this is for July through October. It was projected to be $7 million. Our actuals were 6.3 million, as you can see here. That's short $713,000. $400,000 of that that should have been received in October was received in November. So accounting for that, we are our actuals are at 95% of our projected revenue. Next slide, please. Our expenditures through October 31st are 29% um, underspent in our budget. The um, majority of that is in staffing and also because we have not yet incurred any expenditures for our IT modernization project. Next slide, please. You can see from this uh, bar graph that our revenue is exceeding our expenditures, so uh, that puts us in a good position. Next slide, please. The remainder of the slides are about the industry itself. Uh, so the first one here is commercial licenses. You can see uh, that the license numbers did decrease for commercial licenses in these categories from 2019 through 2021. The gold bar that you see on the screen in each of these categories is quarter one of the current fiscal year. So at the end of September 30, that's what these numbers represent. And you can see that we are starting to see an increase of licensees. Next slide, please. The same is true for nonprofit licenses. The numbers, uh, we did see an increase in each of these categories in the first quarter for this fiscal year. And next slide. All of our other license types have remained relatively stable in the last three years through the pandemic. Next slide, please. So this slide represents our the gross gambling receipts as reported by licensees, uh, reported on a basis. You can see that the quarter that just closed um, is with numbers prior to the pandemic. So the quarter that just closed, there were 236 and a half roughly million dollars in gross gambling receipts reported. The 2019 quarter four receipts reported were 234 million. Next slide. Specific to house banked card rooms for this most recent quarter, we can see that gross gambling receipts are higher than they were 
prior to the pandemic. So the most recent quarter that closed is the $65 million you see here compared to 2019 quarter four, which was 56.8 million rounding up. Uh, next slide, please. So poll tabs, gross gambling receipts. You can see the blue part of each of these bars represents the nonprofit gross gambling receipts. And you can see that the most quarter that closed is roughly on par with numbers that were reported prior to pandemic. And then the orange, oh, back one, please. thank you. The, the orange part of the bars here represent the commercial business volume. And you can see that the numbers over the last two quarters have increased um, each quarter and are exceeding pre-pandemic levels. Next. Go receipts by quarter. We can see that they are increasing, um, not quite as quickly as the commercial activity that we just saw, but the numbers are increasing, um, and you can see that trend. Uh, next slide, please. The same is true for raffles. The numbers, um, the last three quarters, we have seen numbers increase quarter over quarter, although again, you can see from here that they are not yet approaching where they were prior to the pandemic. Next. And this last slide represents our manufacturer and distributor reporting, and they too are reporting quarter, over quarter increases with this calendar year. Are there any questions? Any questions? Christina, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Okay. Any any questions for Christina? So I guess I just have uh, two questions. So uh, because we have essentially quarterly licensing payments generally, um, I, I saw, I think it was like the fourth slide, and we have, you know, obviously the the primary quarterly payment months so july and october um, we have you know big revenue and kind of normal-ish expenditures for those months um is there is there value in showing those kind of in between months is there are we going to see some anomaly going forward or would it maybe be more beneficial to kind of show that uh, as more of a quarterly performance, because we'd maybe expect those to be more closely aligned. I, I do think moving forward, there would be value in providing quarterly summed totals. However, uh, displaying that at this point in time because of pandemic revenue, I think would provide um, not I don't believe the information that provided would be as accurate as we would expect. So moving forward, I would say definitely reviewing those, uh, not both revenue and expenditures on a quarterly chart would be uh, beneficial. Okay, awesome. And when do we anticipate hearing from you again on the, the next quarterly reports are due the end of January, so I would be able to have numbers available in February. Awesome. Uh, Senator Conway, I see your hand raised. And we have you on mute, sir. I was asking for some clarity on the sports betting. I see that the amount of sports betting is going up. Is that correct? I saw that one first figure you introduced on sports betting yeah so the sports wagering is that just represents the initial licensing fees for vendors okay so it's mostly licensing fees okay very good all right anything else question wise okay no oh senator no 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 i won't okay anything <laughs> else Crescinda? uh not at this time all right, welcome again and thank you. Thank you. All right.
Uh, that allows us to now move to tab three on our agenda, which is a rule up for final action. Chapter 230-23, uh, self-exclusion. And I believe uh, presenting on this is Ashley Layden, our rules coordinator, and Tony Hughes, special agent supervisor. Actually, Tony is not. Tony's available not available here, but okay. he is the project manager for this project. So he's with us in spirit. Yes. All right. Well, I've seen Ashley manage quite well on her own. So Ashley, welcome. Thank you. Chair Sizemore, commissioners and ex officios. At the October 2019 meeting, you chose to initiate rulemaking to adopt rules to establish a statewide self-exclusion program. At the October 2021 meeting, you chose to file draft language, including changes that were made at that meeting for further discussion. That language was filed with the Office of the Code Revisor on October 21st, 2021 to be published in the Washington State Register, issue 21-22-005, and was posted on the agency website. No additional feedback has been received, Staff recommends final action be taken on this language today, making the rules effective on May 1st, 2022. And I welcome any questions you might have. All right, any questions for Ashley or anyone else from staff? Okay, not seeing any. Is there a motion? Or excuse me, stand by just a second. Uh, I would like to open this up for public comment. So at this time, uh, we will have a public comment opportunity uh, specific to uh, the staff recommendation uh, for chapter 230-23, our self-exclusion rules. Is there anyone wishing to make public comment on this? All right, I am seeing no one raise a hand or try to capture my attention by another manner. So with that, is there a motion? Mr. I'm Chair, I'd like to make that motion if I may. This is Julia uh, Patterson. Go ahead, I, Vice Chair. I move to approve final action on these rules as presented by staff. Second. Okay, and with an effective date of May 1st, 2022. Is that correct? That's a friendly amendment. I'll accept that. OK, we'll just we'll just include it. Is there a second? Second. OK, it's been moved by Vice Chair Patterson and seconded by Commissioner Levy that we uh, approve final action on these rules as presented by staff and effective May 1st, 2022. Is there any discussion on the motion? All right, hearing no discussion, we'll try a voice vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Aye, any opposed? Motion carries four to zero. All right, thank you everyone on that. Uh, the next item for up for our consideration is, uh, excuse me. I had one thing yes. to add to, to that. Um, so I just wanted to bring to your attention that um, at the January meeting, um, Tony Hughes will be here and we would like to, we plan to take some time and Tony will be presenting to the commissioners and seeking your input on um, self-exclusion program performance measures so that we can get these in place and make sure that we're collecting the, the data that you're interested in um, before we set the program up um, rather than waiting a year after the program is in place. So um, if you can just be thinking of those things, he'll have some um, ideas and some information to share with you on that to get you started in that conversation but we will be asking for time to have that conversation and get your input so that we can then proceed forward with the program that incorporates the data that you're interested in okay excellent any questions or comments on that additional information all right thank you thank you 
we look forward to having that discussion with Tony in January. Uh, now, moving on to tab four in our agenda, uh, rule up for final action, chapter 230.19, uh, sports wagering. Uh, for this, we again have Ashley Layden, and uh, additionally, uh, we have Julie Lease, our tribal liaison, and I'm sure if necessary, we have many, many, many backups that can add to the conversation. So with that, uh, Ashley, are you leading us off on this? I am. Okay. Chair Sizemore, commissioners and ex officios, at the July 2020 meeting, you chose to initiate rulemaking to adopt new rules and amend current rules in order to implement the new sports wagering law. At the October 2021 meeting, you chose to file draft language for further discussion. That language was filed with the Office of the Code Revisor on October 19th, 2021 to be published in the Washington State Register issue 21-21-094 and was published posted on our agency website. Feedback was received from the Honorable Ron Allen, Tribal Chair and CEO of Jamestown's Clallam Tribe on behalf of the Washington Indian Gaming Association. Based on that feedback, staff has made some proposed changes to the following rules to clarify our intent that the rules are consistent with tribal state sports wagering compact amendments. Those rules are WAC 230.19.005 subsection 9, the definition of unusual wagering activity, WAC 230.19.025 sports wagering integrity, WAC 230.19.030 integrity monitoring provider requirements, WAC 230.19.035 sports wagering system requirements, and WAC 230.19.040 geofence and geolo geolocation requirements. And I'm going to turn it over to Julie Lees to further explain those proposed changes. All right, thank you. Hi, Julie. Welcome. Hello. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, Julie Lease, the Tribal Liaison for the Washington State Gambling Commission. As Ashley mentioned, I'll be going through the changes um, that are provided in the packet. For the first uh, change that you'll see in these rules is for the definition of unusual wagering activity. For those of you following in the packet, the red line version is on page 304 of 487. Um, <clears throat> With the unusual wagering activities we added and deemed by the sports wagering operation to be consistent with the definitions that are in all of our compact amendments related to sports wagering. And Chair, would you like me to pause on each one for questions or wait, save questions till the end? Uh, pause would probably be good. Okay. Any questions on that first proposed change? Okay. Well, looks like you're free to move on. Perfect. Thank you. So the next rule that we'll be discussing is 23019025 related to sports wagering integrity. When staff reviewed um, this particular rule, what we realized is that the um, this integrity reporting piece applied to all vendors, and that is not how the process is. Um, outlined in the compact that um, for compact purposes, the integrity monitoring provider will be the, the center of um, the sports wagering integrity. That's where the information goes from the tribe and who will be sending information out. So staff is proposing removing this rule um, in the red line version. It's on page 306 of 487 in your electronic packet. Okay, any questions on the removal of 025? Okay, not seeing anyone raise a hand. Julie, go ahead. All right, thank you. The next rule we'll be discussing is 230.19.030, and with the proposed removal of 025, the, this rule will be renumbered to 025. So for um, this particular rule, the um, it was clear that um, this role was it was confusing in the order that was in and so we changed the order of the rule and also tried to clarify those compact requirements um, in this particular rule for the red line version it's on page 308 of 4 
87, although that is a difficult version to read. So um, if you want to see the clean version, um, it will be on the bottom of page 315 of 486 and going on to 316. Any questions? I am not seeing anyone raise a hand. Thank you. Uh, the next uh, require our next rule that is uh, I'll be discussing is 230.19.035 regarding the sports wagering system requirements. And as I mentioned in the previous rule with the proposed removal of 025, um, this one would be renumbered to 030. Um, this particular requirement um, talks about the technical standard of GLI 33 applying to the sports wagering systems. Uh, this was a requirement that <clears throat> we had removed and then added back in at the request of stakeholders. And there was a concern that the compact has an alternative standard provided that wasn't addressed in the rule. So what you'll see on page 309 of 486 is the red line version uh, inclusion of a statement of or equivalent alternative standards agreed to in accordance with tribal state compact. So this was to show that there will there may be alternative standards if they're agreed to within compact. Any questions? Not seeing any. Awesome. Keep on moving. Uh, <laughs> the last rule I'll be covering is 230.19.040 related to geofence and geolocation requirements. Like the previous rules, um, it, with the proposed removal of 025, this would be, be renumbered to 035. In this particular section, um, the, con the concern that we were addressing was the specific requirements that were set out in subsection 2 related to what the geo um, fence and geo location systems, what they are, how they're supposed to operate. Um, we went ahead and removed those sections because those are included in the compact. And what's left is um, that the the tribal state compact will direct the geo fencing for the compact compliance and um, letting the sports wagering vendors know also that they cannot violate federal, state, or tribal laws. Any questions? Yeah. Questions on geofence? Okay, I'm not seeing any, Julie. All right, well, that concludes my portion of the presentation. I, I will pass this back to Ashley to share um, some feedback that we've received since these rules were sent out to stakeholders. Okay. Thank you, Julie. These proposed changes were sent out to stakeholders for review on December 2nd, 2021. Feedback was received verbally from GeoComply expressing concerns that the proposed changes don't account for the importance of geolocation standards and their testing process. Feedback was also received from the Honorable Ron Allen, Tribal Chair and CEO of Jamestown's Clallam Tribe, on behalf of the Washington Indian Gaming Association, stating their belief that the proposed rules are unnecessary. However, requesting that if the rules must be in place, staff adopt an additional rule stating that to the extent any rule in this chapter conflicts with the compact of a tribe, a sports wagering vendor must follow the compact and the tribal regulations. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Tina Griffin. Thank you, Ashley and Julie. And so um, with that, um, staff is um, recommending that a new rule be put into um, be considered. And Julie, I'm going to ask you to pull up the it should, it should be displayed. It is now. Thank you. And so um, in the rules in in the rules with Black Chapter 23019, we attempted to recognize and to clarify the tribes and the tribal gaming agencies are the primary regulators. And based on the feedback we received, um, that was not clear. So we are recommending this um, proposed statement to be included in the rules to recognize our relationship with the tribes. And the first paragraph um, of this rule 
is consistent with the language that was in House Bill 2638, um, authorizing sports wagering. And then it's also included as the intent statement of RCW 9460364, as well as this language is also incorporated into, um, in, in some version, each of the tribal state compact sports wagering amendments. The second sentence, or excuse me, the second paragraph, uh, the first sentence of the, of the uh, of this proposed rule uh, indicates that it is the intent that these rules reflect and honor the agreements in the tribal state compact. And then the last sentence um, of the second paragraph uh, is most of Chairman Allen's proposed language in his letter of December 6 on behalf of WIGA. So with that, um, and do we have to read this into the record? Actually, since I'm referring to something that's on the screen. Uh, that would be cleanest. Um, okay. Another way. Okay. Unless this is gonna be reflected within the recording. Okay, so um, uh, I'll just go ahead and read the language up that we are proposing right now. Um, so we are proposing WAC Chapter 230-19-001, a purpose um, tribes in Washington State have more than 20 years experience with and, in a, and a proven track record of successfully operating gaming in accordance with tribal state compacts. Therefore, we and the tribes have a proven track record of successful regulation of gaming in accordance with respective tribal state compacts. Therefore, it is our intent that these rules reflect and honor the agreements in tribal state compact. To the extent any rule in this chapter conflicts with the tribal state compact of the tribe where the sports wagering is taking place, the sports wagering vendor must follow the tribal state compact in furtherance thereof. So with that, uh, staff's recommendation is, um, Julie, if you wouldn't mind, thank you, um, that you file for further discussion, which means refiling the CR 102 and seeking public comment on the proposed rules as outlined in your packet that Julie went over, as well as the new rule that um, we just read outlining the purpose of WAC Chapter 230-19, which also includes most of Chairman Allen's proposed language in his letter of December 6 on behalf of WIGA. All right, are there any questions for Tina? All right, so is there any further input information that staff would like to add at this point? No? At this time. Okay. Uh, so with that, I believe that we are at a point where it would be prudent. Or is there any anything from commissioners before we go to a public comment period? Okay, I'm not seeing any commissioners raise their hand. Um, I would like to now open up uh, the proposal, or excuse me, the rule up for final action, uh, chapter 230.19, our sports wagering rules uh, for public comment. Uh, so if you would like to make public comment on this rule proposal and or the staff recommendation, now would be the time. And I see Rebecca George has raised her hand. So Rebecca, I'll ask that you come on camera if you can, uh, unmute yourself, and then please identify yourself and uh, anybody that you're representing uh, for the record, please. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. My name is Rebecca George. I'm the executive director of the Washington Indian Gaming Association. I had a bun bunch of comments uh, that I was going to make, but sounds like uh, we can pivot and, and just thank you uh, and look forward to working with you um, what, with these refiled rules. So thank you. So that means you're supportive of staff recommendation then? I'm supportive, yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. 
Uh, is there anyone else that would like to make public comment on our sports wagering rules or staff recommendation? All right, last call. Any further public comment on this rule? All right, seeing no one else uh, raise a hand or try to catch my attention. Um, is there a motion from uh, Commissioner? I move to refile a 102. Um, I don't know what it's what I'm supposed to say. Just uh, would it be helpful if uh, the last sheet yes. that was up would is up on the screen? Yes, Julie. the staff recommendation. Thank you, Julie. Okay, I move to refile the CR 102 and seek public comment on the proposed rules rule changes um, as outlined in a new rule that includes most of Chairman Allen's proposed language. All right, so that motion I believe we've kind of captured. Uh, is there a second? Patterson seconds. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to file for further discussion, uh, which includes refiling a CR 102 uh, based on, uh, let's see, and seek public comment. Uh, and that 102 would include proposed rule changes as outlined in our packet and a new rule as sh uh, previously shown on our screen and read into the record by interim director Griffin. Uh, is that accurate? Uh, accurately reflect your motion? Yes. All right. Any discussion on that motion? All right, I am uh, go ahead, Commissioner Levy. So this is Commissioner Levy, and I just wanted to make clear that during this time, I know it can be difficult for, you know, uh, commissioners can't necessarily meet and talk about these things. So if there's any uh, tribal attorneys, lobbyists, or members who want to reach out to me directly to go over any of this, I would invite you to uh, send me an email directly. Uh, it's my gambling commission email address, and if someone doesn't have that, uh, I'm sure you can get it from staff somehow, um, so that we can kind of dive into this a little bit more. If if that anybody is interested in that, thank you for that. Any further dis, uh, comments or discussion? All right, well, we will try a voice vote. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Say nay. All right, any abstention? Chair Sizemore, I'm not abstaining. I actually meant to vote aye. I just didn't wasn't quick enough on my mute button. All right, I think we, we can enter you as an aye. Uh, so uh, I have it as four aye, zero nay. So uh, staff, can we help you now that this has passed? Uh, what is it, or let's see. Should we clarify exactly kind of what we expect the process to be from here? So new 102, new language, which means public comment period is now going to be open for uh, ultimately uh, tell about our February meeting essentially. Um, so we're expecting if if everybody's happy with it, it'd be nice to hear that. Well, if, since we have a new rule, right. we will go ahead and um, send out once we get it through the um, OTS, we'll put it all together again, send it out again, and then I 
to Commissioner Levy. Uh, staff would work with Commissioner Levy, it sounds like, um, through her invitation um, for tribal leaders or any other stakeholder to reach out to her. And um, we'll just work directly with Commissioner Levy and any feedback that she gets. Um, okay, go ahead, Commissioner Patterson. Vice Chair Patterson, excuse me. Right. I, of course, commissioners can work with uh, whoever they want, but I, I don't know about that um, way of disseminating information to the entire commission. So I'm not understanding that. Tina, could or could you explain that a little bit more? I I'd like to see staff work very closely with the tribes and then and then work with us all um, to help us understand the progress that we're making. But I, I didn't understand what you were saying about working through Commissioner Levy. Could you explain that? And, and maybe I can jump in. I think what it, it feels like to me is, I mean, Commissioner Levy was uh, trying to give deference to the Open Public Meetings Act. So I think Commissioner Levy was certainly saying that she's available for conversations or any uh, input. And I guess I would expect that any one of us, five commissioners, would that would apply to all of us, that you know, right. we're certainly willing to uh, have those conversations. Uh, but we are all going to respect the Open Public Meetings Act and not um, you know, we're not going to uh, make decisions outside of an open public meeting. So um, I think, um, you know, for me, I mean, I'll just speak for me. I, you know, I feel like uh, the staff's done incredible amount of work on this, really refined things, um, and we kind of have a new starting point. And um, again, hopefully, you know, we hear that, you know, we find we finally hit it. We've hit the um, the sweet spot. And if there are, you know, hopefully, you know, if there's a few changes that people still are seeking that we'll hear about it and then we can consider those as as they come. So I think you make a good point, Vice Chair, that, yeah, it's, this is not a uh, everything funnels through Commissioner Levy. I think. Um, we probably, you know, we all are in that same kind of position to where we're open for hearing that input. I just didn't want staff to feel like they had to work with one of us um, because I was a gracious offer of Commissioner Levy's and I'd like to make the same offer to anyone who would like to reach out to me. I'm very open to that, but I just want staff to be able to work with us as a whole. And they've done a good job of sharing information with us individually so that we do not um, violate the Open Public Speakings app. So I just like would, would like to continue in that way. Is that, but I, so Tina, I didn't really understand what you were <laughs> contemplating there. No, I think you, I think you've, you've helped me clarify. So um, yes, if, if, Tribes wish, it sounds like if, if anybody wishes to reach out to the commissioners, then we'll continue to work with, staff will work with the commissioners on any feedback that you receive. Um, we can hold another meeting for all stakeholders, um, as well as tribal tribal leaders, et cetera, to, and tribal representatives to attend. Um, we, we certainly can do that in the upcoming months. Okay, well, thank, thank you for clarifying. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. So with that, we are now able to move on to our next item on our agenda. Excuse me. Uh, tab five, rule up for final action titled applying for a gambling service supplier license. And I believe Ashley Layden, you're back with us on this. Chair Sizemore, Commissioners and Ex-Officios, in 2020, you initiated rulemaking to amend or adopt rules for both sports wagering and electronic raffles. 
This rulemaking has resulted in the need to amend WAC 230-03-210, applying for a gambling service supplier license to include performing the testing and certification of sports wagering systems and gambling equipment as required by Title 230 WAC as services requiring a gambling service supplier license. At the October 2021 meeting, you chose to file draft language for further discussion. That language was filed with the Office of the Code Revisor on October 19th, 2021 to be published in the Washington State Register, issued 21-21-093, and was posted on our agency website. No additional feedback has been received. Staff recommends taking final action on this language today, making the rules effective 31 days from filing them with the Office of the Code Revisor. And I welcome any questions you might have. Any questions for Ashley? All right, hearing none, uh, I would like to open it up for public comment on tab five here, this rule up for final action. Is there anyone that would like to make public comment on this rule? Right. I am not seeing any hands raised or anyone unmute themselves, so we'll go ahead and close the public testimony on that. Is there a motion? Do we take turns or do you want me to do it? Whoever would like to make the motion works for me. Mr. Chair, this is Commissioner Patterson. I move to approve final action on these rules as presented by staff and make, and I also move to make them effective 31 days after filing with the supervisor's office. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, it's been moved by Vice Chair Patterson, seconded by Commissioner Levy, that we approve final action on these rules as presented by staff, effective 31 days after filing with the Office of the Code Revisor. Is there any discussion on the motion? All right, hearing no discussion. Uh, uh, we'll try a voice vote. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries four to zero. Thank you on that. Uh, so now we will move to tab number six, which is the rule up for final action, action, minimum cash on hand requirements. And again, Ashley presenting. Chair Sizemore, Commissioners and Ex-Officios, at the August 2021 meeting, you chose to accept a petition and initiate rulemaking to address minimum cash on hand requirements to keep jackpot money in a separate off-site bank account rather than on the premises. At the October 2021 meeting, you chose to file draft language for further discussion. That language was filed with the Office of the Code Revisor on October 19, 2021 to be published in the Washington State Register issue 21-21-092 and was posted on our agency website. No additional feedback has been received. Staff recommends taking final action on this language today, making the rules effective 31 days after filing them with the Office of the Code Revisor. And I welcome any questions you might have on this rule, package of rules. Okay, any questions for Ashley on the uh, minimum cash on hand requirements? All right, not seeing any questions. So we'll go ahead and open this up for public comment as well. Is there anyone wishing to make public comment on our rule for minimum cash on hand requirements? All right, I'm not seeing anyone raise a hand or unmute. So with that, is there a motion? I move to approve final action on these rules as presented by staff. Second. All right, and uh, effective 31 days after filing, is that? Yes. Your intent, okay. 
So uh, hopefully I got this right. It was moved by Commissioner Levy, seconded by Vice Chair Patterson, that we approve final action on these rules as presented by staff uh, and make them effective 31 days after filing with the Office of the Code Revisor. Is there any, any discussion on the motion? All right. Hearing no discussion, we'll try a voice vote again. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any opposed? Uh, motion carries four to zero. All right, thank you. So uh, four rules up for final action today. I guess I would like to just extend uh, my appreciation and I'm sure my fellow commissioners appreciation of all of the work that staff puts into this process uh, to bring something from um, a concept, uh, you know, whether it come from the agency or it comes from the public, uh, but to put the work in and bring this forward and, you know, we it, it's just hard to, you know, really express how much uh, certainly I appreciate and, and acknowledge how much work goes into all that. So um, I just want to put that out there. So. All right, uh, next item we are going to uh, go to is tab seven in our materials, a petition for rule change. So this is a rule petition to repeal. Uh, concerning WAC 230-13-090, adult supervision of unattended music, amusement games. Excuse me. Uh, Ashley, uh, you have this one too. Chair sure, Sizemore, commissioners and ex officios, the Gambling Commission has received a public comment submitted through the website in the form of a petition for rule change and therefore we're treating it as such. Because it was submitted as an anonymous public comment, there is no contact information for the petitioner. The petitioner is asking for the repeal of WAC 230-13090, Adult Supervision of Unattended Amusement Games. This rule requires that operators of unattended amusement games or coin activated games provide adult supervision at all locations where school aged minors or anyone between the ages of 6 and 17 are allowed to play during all hours of operation. The petitioner feels this change is needed because these games are self service and operated elsewhere, such as department stores and restaurants without requiring an employee to oversee the game and therefore does not feel this requirement should be necessary at a shopping center either. The petitioner asks that if this rule cannot be repealed, then the petitioner would like the option to monitor amusement games using video surveillance and have security remove school aged minors if present during school hours. RCW 9.46.0331 subsection 4 states that in no event may a licensee conduct any amusement games at regional shopping centers specifically without providing adult supervision during all hours the licensee is open for business prohibiting school aged minors from entry during school hours. Under the requirements of the Administrative Procedure Act, the Commission must take action on this petition within 60 days of receiving it. Your options are to accept the petition and initiate rulemaking proceedings by filing the rule as proposed for further discussion or to deny the petition in writing stating the reasons for denial and specifically address the concerns stated in the petition or where appropriate indicate alternative means by which the agency will address the concerns raised in the petition. Staff recommends denial of this petition because the change being requested is required by RCW 9.46.0331, which is a change that would have to be made by the legislature. And with that, I welcome any questions you might have. Okay, any questions for Ashley? All right, not seeing any questions. Uh, we'll go ahead and open this also up for uh, public comment. Uh, so at this time, we will go ahead and allow for public comment on this, uh, this uh, rule petition uh, to repeal. Is there anyone that would like to make public comment on this proposal? 
right, I'm not seeing any hands raised or anyone unmuting. Uh, so with that, is there a motion? Mr. Chair, this is Julia Patterson. Yeah, Vice Chair, go ahead. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to deny this petition in writing uh, because the change that's being requested is required by RCW 9.46.0331, which is a change that would have to be made by the legislature. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, it's been moved by Vice Chair Patterson and uh, seconded by Commissioner Levy to, uh, excuse me, deny the petition in writing uh, as the requested change uh, would require a change to an RCW 9.46.0331, uh, which as we know would require a change, that change to be made at the legislature. Uh, does that capture your motion? Yes, thank you. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? All right, seeing no discussion. All those in favor of denying in writing, uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries four to zero. All right, thank you, Ashley. I think we're getting close. Uh, tab eight is a petition for rule change. Uh, it's a rule uh, for online gaming or online gambling, excuse me. Ashley, this one's you as well. Chair Sizemore, commissioners and ex-officios, Michael Jacques of Oregon City, Oregon, is proposing to repeal rules in order to allow for online gambling sites such as DraftKings to be allowed in the state. I don't believe that the petitioner is present today as I was unable to reach the petitioner after several attempts. Um, the petitioner feels this change is needed because the public should determine how they spend their money, not the state. Per RCW 9.46240, gambling information cannot be transmitted over the internet except for activities related to sports wagering as authorized in RCW 9.46. 0.0364 and RCW 9.46.0368. At this time, sports wagering is authorized to occur on tribal lands within the state. Under the requirements of the Administrative Procedure Act, the Commission must take action on this petition within 60 days of receiving it. Your options are to accept the petition and initiate rulemaking proceedings by filing the rule as proposed for further discussion, or to deny the petition in writing stating the reasons for denial and specifically address the concerns stated in the petition, or where appropriate, indicate alternative means by which the agency will address the concerns raised in the petition. Staff recommends denial of this petition. The petitioner is requesting a change that can only be made by the legislature. And I welcome any questions you might have at this time. Any questions for Alicia? Or ex excuse me, Ashley? All right, not seeing any questions. Uh, we will now open this uh, item up for public comment. Is there anyone that would like to make public comment on this request uh, for online gambling? All right, I'm not seeing any hands or anyone unmuting. Uh, so with that, is there a motion? Mr. Chair, this is Vice Chair Patterson. Okay. I'd like I'd like to move to deny the petition in writing. And the reason why is because the petitioner is requesting a change that can only be made by the legislature. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, it's been moved by Vice Chair Patterson, seconded by Commissioner Levy, that we deny the petition in writing uh, based on the fact that uh, this would require a statutory change by the legislature. 
Uh, is there any further discussion on the motion? All right, hearing none. All those in favor of denying the petition in writing, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries four to zero. All right. Thank you for that, Ashley. I think that's all for you today. All right. Thank you, as always. Good job, Ashley. <laughs> All right, that will now move us to tab nine our, on our agenda, which is a uh, legislative prep for 2022. And we have with us uh, Tommy Oaks, uh, special agent, uh, and our legislative uh, liaison. Good afternoon, Chair. Good afternoon. It, yep, it's afternoon. Yeah, it is afternoon. <laughs> uh, so good afternoon, Chair, uh, Vice Chair, and fellow commissioners. My name is, for the record, my name is Tommy Oaks. I'm the legis interim legislative liaison for the Gambling Commission. And what my job is today is to give you kind of the update going into session. So the 22, 2022 legislative session begins Monday, January 10th. It's a short session and it ends on March 10th. Um, Pre-filing the bills, started yesterday on December 6th and they actually were posted a little bit this morning and from the bills that I've seen it doesn't appear that gambling any gambling bills are on the pre-filing. Our main focus this year will be our agency request legislation authorizing community and nonprofit senior profits that are senior centers to operate unlicensed bingo. It was approved by the governor's office to move forward and we are currently looking for a legislative sponsor for the bill. Um, our committee chairs and committees have not changed. The Senate Labor, Commerce and Tribal Affairs is still chaired by Senator Kaiser and Senator Con Conway is the vice chair for Labor and Senator Stand Stanford is the vice chair for Commerce and Tribal Affairs. Um, Senator King continues as the ranking Republican on the committee. The House Commerce and Gaming Committees continue to be chaired by Representative Shelley Kloba and vice chair is uh, Emily Wicks. Representative McEwen is the ranking Republican on the committee. As far as I can tell, this year the House and Senate will may have may have a possible mix of virtual and in-person session. Uh, there's nothing officially posted and I looked at just a few minutes ago and I didn't see anything. Um, I'll advise you once I hear for sure how that will go when they post those results. The other thing I want to talk about a little bit is the legislative process for position on bills. Um, in our January 22nd, our January 22 meeting, I will begin briefing you on the bills that could impact the agency or industry. I also provide recommendations on those bills that staff believe you should consider taking a position. Um, I'd also like to check in with you during this meeting to make sure that um, we're still meeting the stand the needs for the commission. Normally, if there's a hearing on a gambling related bill and the commissioners have not re reviewed it yet because of the timing of the commission meetings, I would only testify on the technical aspects of the bill. I would make it clear we have part time commissioners who have not yet met yet to take a position on the bill. Past committees have been very interested in the commissioner's positions, so I would continue to bring these bills forward to you even if the initial hearing has already passed. If staff recommends a position on the bill, I will review that during my legislative report. The commission supports a bill. Staff would typically work with the chair of the commission to draft a letter of support for the committee chair. The letter would is usually a position statement, which is um, we would post on the agency's website. The commission would normally take a formal vote if they want to support a bill. Past commissioners will follow a similar process if the commission is against a bill or supports the current law instead. Staff recommend a neutral position on the bill. Normally there is not a vote. That's kind of how um, we see the sessions going and obviously in January I'll be starting to give you updates on what bills are, are coming out or any of that. Anything that I think will affect the commission or the agency. And do you have any questions for me? Okay, any questions for Tommy? Uh, Senator Conway. Yeah, I, I just want to comment on the uh, 
Tommy's comments about how the session will work. Senate has developed rules, Tommy, to committee work will be virtual. The floor work will be in person. All right. Okay. So we will be virtual on our committee meetings in the first stages and second stage or third stages, but we will be meeting in person on the floor when uh, we are on the floor. It's likely that uh, the floor date when we're in committee right. hearings might be on Wednesdays if we have it. So uh, that's just kind of an update on your report, Tommy. Okay. Thank you, sir, very much. I appreciate that information. Thank you, Senator. So, and maybe just uh, I'm going to ask my fellow commissioners to maybe help Tommy out just a little bit. So, uh, Vice Chair and Commissioner Levy, I guess, and maybe Tommy was going to ask us this in, in January, but maybe if we can give him a heads up. Um, so, for the three of us that have been here uh, for past sessions, I guess I'd like to kind of check in and make sure that we're all okay with uh, continuing continuing with kind of our status quo the way uh, we have done things in the past. And then for you, Commissioner Lawson, um, if you have any specific questions or uh, based on uh, the memo, whether there is anything that you would propose that we would uh, do differently uh, or that you would propose for us to co consider in how to manage the legislative session. So if everybody's fine with uh, the status quo, no reason to make comment, but this would be a time to give Tommy any ideas that he might have to change course. Okay, doesn't look like anybody uh, wants you to change course, Tommy. That's good. Stick with the, the system. So, all right, I will. All right, and if I don't see you before, I guess I'll see you probably on the 10th, first day of session. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Uh, that now brings us to tab 10, uh, which is our uh, director hire update, and presenting will be Lisa Benavides, HR director, and for any action, Vice Chair Patterson will wield the gavel. Good afternoon, Chair Sycamore, Commissioners, and ex officios. For the record, my name is Lisa Benavides, and I am the HR Director for the Gambling Commission. As Chair Sizemore said, I'm here today to provide a brief update on the status of the Director Hire. Um, one item of note is that Chair Sizemore has decided to remain recused for the remainder of this process. The remainder of this process is still um, in the works in that I'm working to identify um, dates, um, options for our second interviews of the top two candidates of the commissioners. It is likely that these interviews will take place in January as I'm having difficulty finding a day in December that will work for commissioners. Once the interview days are identified, I will ask commissioners to hold those days and times on their calendars, and then I will invite the top two candidates um, to the interview. We have, again, just as a reminder, reached out to both candidates, and they are both interested in continuing to be considered for this position. And I'm assuming that we will um, still have those two interested for interviews in January. And at this time, that is the only update that I have. Any further questions for or any questions at all for Lisa? All right. Well, I think that concludes tab 10 then for our agenda and now leaves us with uh, our opportunity for general public com comment. So certainly if anyone would like to make public comments on any topics from earlier today, or uh, topics that we have not discussed, now would be the opportunity to address the commission. Is there anyone? Uh, I see uh, Roxanne Waldron. And again, for public comment, yep, if you can come on camera and then identify yourself for the record, please. 
Thank you, Chair Sizemore and commissioners and ex-officios. I'm Roxanne Waldron with the State Problem Gambling Program, and I'm the manager. And I just want to take a moment to thank you all for moving the self-exclusion rules forward. Um, I know you had a robust conversation about it and about the issues, and I just really appreciated that. And um, I believe that these um, rules as, as push forward will be able to, you know, help folks that are struggling with problem gambling in our state. So looking forward to the rollout and I thank you very much. All right, thank you. Certainly anytime uh, somebody wants to praise the commission, we're all for that. Uh, but we'll also take criticism as well. So is there anyone else that would like to make public comment? All right, I'm not seeing any other hands raised or anyone else uh, unmuting. Uh, is there any uh, good and welfare from commissioners before we adjourn? All right, I'm not seeing any commissioners rise to speak, so we'll go ahead and adjourn our December meeting uh, we want to wish everyone a great rest of the year, and we look forward to uh, seeing you all in 2022. With that, we are adjourned. Thank you all.